Hey, Honors Chemistry. So I wanted to make a quick video answer key to worksheet number six, why structure is important. So in one of my previous videos, I we talked about and came to conclusions about three different types of solids. We have ionic, molecular, and or atomic solids. And so those are going to be the three different types of solids that we're going to have to differentiate between. If you remember, ionic solids are the ones that have multiple colors and they're all connected. Atomic should have one color and they may or may not be connected. And then molecular will have more than one color or not and they are never connected. Um, and so I have the first one done. Here's NaCl. We already know that NaCl is an ionic compound. It has Na plus and Cl minus one. And if we didn't know that that was the formula, we could see two different colors. They're all completely connected. It's ionic. So that's the first thing you're going to do is go through and identify the type of solids. So let's do the rest of them. We have CaCO3. We might recognize CO3 as the carbonate ion. Other than that, we have more than one color and they're all connected. That's ionic. Next one, it says S8. It looks like the smallest particle here looks like it's a, a molecule because it's just sulfur all connected. Um, and none of these are touching at all. So with none of these touching at all and my smallest particle being a molecule because it's S8, this is going to be molecular. Next one, we got copper. Copper is just an element. And we got those copper elements. All of the atoms of the elements are connected. It looks like the smallest particle is an atom and they're completely connected. This is a metal, by the way. Since the smallest particle is an atom that's completely connected, and look at the difference between this and this. These are more than one kind of connected to each other, but they're not connected between molecules. This is completely connected, and there's only one type of smallest particle that's completely connected, and that's the atom. That makes this an atomic solid. Next one, we got H2O2. We got two nonmetals. That makes that a molecular compound. This is hydrogen peroxide. Um, it looks like my smallest particle is a molecule, and it's hard to see but none of these are touching at all. So more than one color, not touching at all, molecular. Next page, we got PBI2. There's like a dark purple and light purple. We got two different colors, completely touching or connected, ionic. CO2, we got more than one color. We got two colors. Looks like the smallest particle is a molecule because it's CO2 and none of those particles are touching or connected whatsoever. No connections between particles makes this molecular automatic. Molecular. And then the last one, it looks like we have one color. Argon is the element. It's also a nonmetal. So looks like the smallest particle is an atom. None of them are touching. This makes it atomic. We got smallest particle is an atom. That's what makes it atomic versus if I had compare AR to S8. Look at AR versus S8, right? It looks like the smallest particle without connections is an atom. For this one, it looks like the smallest particle without connections a molecule. That makes this atomic. That makes that molecular. Then let's walk through the last column. In the last two columns, I give you the melting point and the boiling point of the solid. Now, what you're going to do with these melting points and boiling points is figure out what phase this solid is going to be on the Earth, Mercury, or Pluto. <clears throat> And so on Earth, the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. On Mercury, the temperature is 450 degrees Celsius. And Pluto is negative 230 degrees Celsius. So you're going to be looking at the melting points and boiling points. If it's higher than melting but lower than boiling, it'll be a liquid. So higher than melting point 
it'll probably melt and be a liquid. If it's higher than boiling point, it'll probably be a gas because it'll boil and it'll be a gas. So that's just a note. So on Earth, the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. The melting point of NaCl is 801. It's not melting at all, so it's going to be a solid. On Mercury, it's 450 degrees Celsius. That is still not high enough than the melting point. It is not going to melt at all. It's going to stay as a solid, solid. And then Pluto, negative 230 degrees Celsius. It is not nowhere near the melting point, so it's not going to melt. It's a solid. So note, if it's not going to melt, it's going to stay as a solid. So not melt stays as solid. And doesn't that make sense? If you have an ice cube and it's like negative 10 degrees Celsius and you know that ice melts at zero, if it's at negative 10, it's not going to melt. Um, and if we know water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, right? So it's not boil, it might stay as a liquid. Maybe it melts but not boil. So if I had water at like 30 degrees Celsius, that's way above the melting point, but it's not anywhere near the boiling point. So it's in between. It's a liquid. So let's look at the next one. It looks like the melting point of CaCO3, which is calcium carbonate, is 520 degrees Celsius, and then it decomposes after 820. On Earth, 25, that's way lower, way lower than that. It's going to be a solid. Nowhere it's got, not going to melt. On Mercury, this temperature is still below 520. It's not going to melt. It's going to remain as a solid. On Pluto, it's negative 230 degrees Celsius. Nowhere near 520. It's going to remain as a solid. All right, let's do sulfur now, or S8. On Earth, it's 25 degrees Celsius. Its melting point is 115. It's not going to melt. It's a solid. On Mercury, the temperature is 450 degrees Celsius. Its boiling point is 444. It's going to boil. It's going to go beyond the melting point. It's going to boil and be a gas on Mercury. And then on Pluto, it's nowhere near its melting point. So it's going to be a solid. All right. The next one, we have copper. Um, let's just say that these two temperatures are way, way higher than any of the temperatures on Earth, Mercury, and Pluto. So it's not going to melt on Earth. It's not going to melt on Mercury, and it's certainly not going to melt on Pluto. So solid on Earth, Mercury, and Pluto. Now let's look at H2O2. The melting point is negative 0.41 degrees Celsius. On Earth, 25 degrees Celsius is higher than that, but lower than its boiling point. Remember, this is the melting point. This is the boiling point. So it's going to melt but it's not going to boil. It's less than 150. So since it's going to melt and not boil, it's going to be a liquid on Earth. And hydrogen peroxide is a liquid on Earth. On Mercury, the temperature is 450 degrees Celsius. That is way higher than both these temperatures. It's going to melt and boil. It's going to be a gas. And then on Pluto, it's negative 230 degrees Celsius. That's lower than both of these combined. It's not going to melt. It's going to be a solid. All right, last three. We got PBI2, which is, if you want to name this, this is lead, Roman numeral two, iodide. And look in my review how I knew to, uh, to name this. Its melting point is 402. On Earth, that's way too high. Earth is only 25 degrees Celsius, so it's not going to melt. It's going to remain a solid. On Mercury, it's 450 degrees Celsius. That temperature on Mercury is higher than the melting point. It will melt, but it will not boil. So it'll be a liquid on Mercury. And then finally, on Pluto, it's negative 230 degrees Celsius. That's what Pluto is way lower than these two temperatures, so it's going to remain as a solid. All right, and then we got CO2. The melting point is negative 78, and the boiling point is negative 57. Earth is 25 degrees Celsius, which is a lot higher than these two. So it's going to be a gas. It's going to melt and boil on Earth. So it'll be a gas on Earth. On Mercury, if it's going to do that on Earth, Mercury, it's way higher than this. It's going to still be a gas. 
And on Pluto, Pluto is negative 230 degrees Celsius, which is a lot less than both of these. So it's actually going to remain as a solid on Pluto, since Pluto's temperature is a lot lower than these two. And then finally, we got argon. Its melting point is negative 199, and its boiling point is negative 186. On Earth, 25 degrees Celsius is way higher than these two. So it's going to melt and boil. It'll be a gas. On Mercury, at 450 degrees Celsius, that's still way higher than its melting point and boiling point. It's going to melt and boil. It's going to be a gas. And then on Pluto, negative 230 degrees Celsius is actually lower than both the melting point and boiling point. Since negative 230 is lower than the melting point, it's going to be a solid on Pluto. It looks like almost everything's a solid. Actually, everything's a solid on Pluto. All right. Now, to end this worksheet, we have three questions here. It says, account for the differences in the melting and boiling points of the three types of structures. What I was looking for is it looks like my ionic compounds have the highest boiling points and melting points. So ionic have the greatest. Then next to ionic, we have... We have somewhere between molecular and atomic that could be high. So it looks like some of my moleculars are lower and some of my atomics, my atomics are actually going to be low or high. So it looks like ionic is greater than both molecular and atomic. And let's look at my atomics that are the highest. Look at this. Argon is a non-metal. So my non-metals probably have my lowest melting point and boiling points, and they do. But my metal, look at copper, 1084 and 2567. My metals are really high melting points and boiling points. Copper has a way high melting point, melting point and boiling point than even ionic sodium chloride. So ionic and metals, which are atomic, probably have a greater melting point and boiling point than molecular and non-metal atomics. So it'll probably be ionic and atomic metals. And that's going to be greater than molecular, and that's going to be greater than atomic nonmetals. Sorry if you can't see that. And then it says, predict which of these substances would conduct electricity when molten, which means melted. Well, we know that ionic compounds conduct electricity when melted or dissolved in water. If you remember when we did the light bulb activity or you saw the light bulb activity, I had sodium chloride, which is an ionic compound when it dissolved in water, it um, made the light bulb go on. So that's true for all ionic compounds. Um, so NaCl is ionic. We got CaCO3 in this worksheet. And we have PBI2. I'm also going to add in copper, right? Look at the connections. And it looks like things that have connections are going to conduct electricity. I'm also going to add in copper. And then it says, would any of these conduct electricity as a solid? Copper. It's a metal. And it's solid structure has complete connections. So we're discovering something here. Here are all the solids. Any substance that has connections is going to conduct heat or electricity. Now, sodium chloride and calcium carbonate and lead iodide, they're only going to conduct electricity when molten or dissolved in water. But copper, if it's molten or a solid, it will conduct electricity. All right, that is the video answer key for worksheet number six. 
So this is a complete walkthrough. Let me know if you have any other questions or concerns about understanding the differences between ionic, molecular, and atomic solids, and how we interpret the phases of the different solids at their temperatures, or how we answer these three questions at the end of the worksheet.